Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be talking about the ELRS version of the Zorro radio. Beautiful little radios, have a look at my previous video with the 4-in-1 flying a big glider on the slope. Um, I'll sort of go into more detail about the radio, but this video will be all about the ELRS version. Also in the package we get, like the other radio, we get Velcro straps for uh, strapping a 2S LiPo on the bottom there. I'll demonstrate that in the middle. We get a little USB-C cable there. Uh, other options are this uh, USB, uh, sorry, it's a XT30 to uh, 2S port plug uh, for sort of a, an extended battery cable, external battery cable, and uh, a little mount in there. Um, and I honestly don't know what that mounts for. Anyway, someone will tell me, I'm sure. Now to go with the ELRS version, we, we have a couple of Radio Master ELRS receivers. Uh, absolutely tiny little receivers. This is the EP1 and we also have the EP2. Uh, there's the EP2 there, which I've already uh, soldered up. You can see how small they are. Absolutely tiny. So the EP1, I was calling them the wrong name in the previous video, so just ignore my silly mistake. EP1 comes with a little T antennas and a UFL connector. A couple of antennas there, a longer one and a shorter one. Nice little 2.4 gigahertz T antennas. They're going to fit nicely on your plane, vertical orientation. Here's the EP2, and this one has an onboard uh, ceramic antenna. Range, I'm not too sure, possibly, possibly, possibly 600 meters, uh, but I'm going to have to check that out. I don't really know yet, but look, they're absolutely tiny little receivers. Have to wire them up yourself, and we have ground TX and RX pins there for connecting to your flight control board. I will demonstrate connected to a flight control board. I've set it up in INAV, uh, and so it uses the Crossfire protocol. So if we go into model, Page across, see the internal RF is set to crossfire and uh, there's only off or crossfire. Uh, so let's just have a look at the other one. External, you can add an external module to it as well, I guess, and uh, all the usual options there. But anyway, anyway, selecting crossfire and uh, then we use the uh, ELRS V2 Lua script to bind and set up power and all of that sort of stuff. So let's get out of that. Sys, page across, scripts, tools, and scroll down to the ELRS, ELRS version 2 Lua. Execute that Lua and then it'll populate the screen. It's on the 500, which is the highest packet rate. Telemetry ratio, you can read about all this sort of stuff on, on GitHub. It's all well documented there. Switch mode wide or hybrid. Hybrid gives you um, four full resolution channels. Uh, channel five as a uh, on-off switch and then the rest of the channels up to, what are they, uh, 12 channels, I think, on Crossfire. All the other channels are either two or three position switches. If, if you have it on wide, First four channels, full resolution, channel five, on off switch, and then the rest of the channels are varying amounts of, of higher resolution, but still not full resolution. I think it goes to 64 position resolution. Anyway, to be experimented with later on. Here we can set the transmission power, transmitter power. I've just got it on 10 milliwatts at the moment because I'm mucking around with it. You can go up to 250 milliwatts. With dynamic on, it will automatically reduce the power, transmission power, uh, to whatever the radio needs. So if you're flying closer and you don't need the full power, it'll reduce the power. That's sort of a very intelligent setting. Very good. But I'm just going to leave it on low. And so we'll get out of that. Now I've sort of set this up as an INAV model. So let's go and connect it to a flight control board and... Uh, see how we connect Crossfire in INAV. So, little EP2 receiver, plugging it into UART6 on the um, ATEC H6 
743 wing RX to TX and TX to RX you can plug it in I have bound the radio and it's showing up on the screen so that's good so now we're good to go we can connect up to INAV all working well let's go to straight to the receiver page see all my channels are working there switches are all working momentary switches are working so receiver type is serial we choose crossfire crsf is the serial receiver provider um, and both of these are off we don't need it inverted and we don't need serial receiver half duplex auto will pick it up but either off or auto will work just had a bright idea while i'm connected to the flight control board i can demonstrate the difference between uh, the switch mode hybrid and uh, wide so i've just set it up so that i have channels 5 to 12 on uh, either the s1 or the s2 slider so we can see the smooth operation of the channel of the slider and what it does uh, to the output so you have to power down the receiver to make the change between hybrid and wide so we're in hybrid switch mode at the moment and uh, what we'll do s2 you can see channel 5 is just on off switch so with the slider going from uh, one extent to the other channel 5 is just switching on and off basically channel 7 9 and 11 are uh, set up as six position switches even though it's on the slider and s2 so that's uh, looks like channel 12 is high resolution that's about 16 position and uh, 6, 8 and 10 uh, 6 position switches so let's change to wide mode now and now you can see the all the auxiliary channels are much higher resolution 64 step I think apart from channel 5 which is still just on off so they would be okay for a head tracker I think ELRS crossfire protocol HTX INAV 4.1 this is on a, on a Matec H743 wing all working very nicely now if the battery gets too low below about 6.6 .6 volts I think it is or 6 volts so I don't know uh, it'll start giving you a, a battery warning so you can have your little 2S battery and just plug it straight in the bottom here And if we watch the battery voltage now, it's gone up to 8.3 volts. So that is now reading the voltage from the secondary battery rather than the internal batteries. Really nicely designed and uh, I think Radio Master are on a winner with these radios. Thanks for watching.